This is not your area of expertise, mm -mm, not, not your area of research. It has nothing to do with my own research. And you were telling me you were sitting having a conversation with a colleague for whom it was not their area of research. Either. Is it common for a mathematical researcher to discuss a problem outside their area and start to think, can my area be of use here? Is there anything I do that could... Because it's fa famously, sometimes mm -hmm. it's other areas of mathematics yeah. help other areas unexpectedly, unexpected connections. Is that something you're likely to do? Are you likely to think about your actual expertise and think, could I apply this here? Can I be of any help? I, no, okay, I, honestly, I never feel self-assured enough to think, can I be of help in a, in a area that is not mine? That never happens. Also, I'm a bit out of research now, so I'm just like, but first, I think it is rather common, but also this thing of, oh, I'm, I'm a bit stuck up in my own research. Or like, I, I don't want to think about this. My friends come from some different areas, maybe, and we're going to chat. I don't really understand their problem either. They're too deep in it as well. Oh, randomly yesterday I was just looking at this article and it was talking about this. Do you know anything about this? Oh yeah, I've heard of it by that person. And, and then you, you collect the pieces from different people and you're like, oh, this is actually fun. Also, what remains fun is that I'm not diving too deep into it. Like, for example, the, the proof for trees, which is rather elementary in its construction, is still not so nice. I mean, there have been several new proofs to streamline the first one to make it more elegant. Uh, this is not the kind of proof I find I, I, I'm really interested in, in a way. But the problem in itself and thinking, what kind of tools are they using? Do I have any tool? It's not like giving from your years of research, but do I have any tool that I think would be well suited? Then you start and you're like, yeah, no, it doesn't work. People have tried before me, of course. But still, it's fun to... Do you ever look at the really cool problems and conjectures in other areas of mathematics and think, oh, gosh... I wish I'd studied graph theory now, that's fun. Like, does it, ever, does it ever make you jealous? Yeah, I think during my PhD at the end, I was a bit like, um, why am I doing this? Shouldn't I, oh, this, this is like fun. Should I, should I try that? And at some point I was always brought back thinking, well, actually I've become something of an expert in a very narrow topic. It does feel a bit more comfortable than starting a new completely in something else. And I do feel slightly more competent here than just trying to go over there. But it's always, I always like it when you've got something that can be stated so nicely and so easily, and it's so visual. And now that I do a lot of outreach, I was like, it's such a good problem to tell people, hey, here are a random question people ask themselves. So depending on who you're talking to, you're going to say, it's a problem of loss of information. How can you get back some original information? But if people are already a bit in the math side, you're just like, hey, fun thing, if I give you this, do you manage to get this back? And then you're like, okay, well, next question. Well, what, we're stuck. What do you ask yourself? What, what are the tangent question, the tangent quest you're going to go on today? And I find it super fun. What kind of math do you do? What kind of um, I worked in some infinite dimensional Lie algebras. Infinite dimension. dimensional Lie algebras. So Lie algebra is um is a struct. It's an algebra where the product. Is a, it's called, so it's called a Lie. Lie algebra. Lie was surface Lie was a mathematician. Okay. And so. The, the, the product is a, is a bracket that is non-commutative. So it's AB is not equal to BA, and the, the, the operation measures the degree of non-commutativity in a way. So now, actually, that's fine. That train fits all nicely. There's no problem there at all. Or the other option is that you could change the speed of this train so that you can still have it leave at 6 a.m., but actually try and give it some gusto and just make it go a little bit faster.